Road to Kona, ladies and gentlemen. We are so close to the Ironman World Championship. First time it's going to be taking place in three years. And I am with the person on the planet that you want to talk to if you want an analysis of how things are going to pan out. Craig Alexander, how you doing, Crowey? Mark Allen, how are you? Yeah, no, like you, mate, I'm excited. It's uh, It's been a while between drinks, as they say, but we finally get to head home next week. And, um, yeah, very much looking forward to, to watching um, all these athletes just go at it. You know, it's interesting because I, I don't know how uh, early before the race you got to Kona. I, I was always there about 10 days in advance. And I think a lot of the pros have kind of adopted that. However, this year, so many of the athletes have gone over two weeks early, three weeks early. Do you think that's an advantage or do you think by the time race comes, you're going to be burned out? Well, it depends on your personality. Um, I remember the first year I went there to race, I went three and a half weeks out and that wasn't actually the plan. It, our lease ran out in Boulder and the plan was actually go to San Diego um, in the mm. interim. But um, through circumstance, we ended up just going straight to, to Kona. Um, and I remember I actually had a conversation with you about it. You were saying, oh, be careful. Um, a lot of people, you know, that could burn themselves out. So I was, I was uh, hyper aware of not doing the wrong thing there and very focused on recovery, getting a lot of sleep, mm. um, eating well, making sure that, you know, I was exposing myself to some, some heat load, but, but just being really smart about it. And so I did it that way, but I also did it the other way where I, I'd fly in um eight days or nine days before um and had done a little heat acclimation in, in Colorado in a in a steam room or a sauna and sort of hit the ground running uh with that heat load by the time I got to Kona and I think both ways can work mm. definitely if you're going to get out there early it's you see a lot of athletes get caught up in doing other people's training and doing too much and I just think it, it depends on your personality you need to be self-aware and understand that by that point, a lot of the work's done. Um, it's about course familiarization, just really getting comfortable on the island, mm -hmm. getting to know the course conditions. That For me, that was the big advantage going there three and a half weeks early because I'd never raced there before. Mm -hmm. I understood, you know, the course really well. I knew what time of day the wind changed direction and where it came from. Um, so that, that gave me a lot of confidence going into the race. But I think it can go both ways. Yeah, you know, I did it one year where I went three weeks in advance and I thought this is going to be the secret because, you know, I just <laughs> felt like all of those things were going to happen. I was going to get used to it. I was going to get heat acclimated. I was going to get familiar with the course and the wind and comfortable and the whole thing. And I and I had a terrible race. By the time the race came, I was exhausted, burned out and flat. Yeah. And I realized that, you know, when going to the big island, going to the Ironman World Championship, there's there's like this anticipation and this this build up and and for 10 days i could feel the build continue yeah but when i went for three weeks i could feel the build sort of building and then all of a sudden that it was like the balloon started losing it started to, to de deflate you know and yeah. i couldn't yeah. get it back and by the by the day the race came around i was just like i am over this <laughs> you know yeah. i just wanted to be home so anyway i think you're right yeah, well it, we'll see who who does well with uh, going early, going late. But yeah, before we kind of get into the specifics, give me your take on how the two days of racing, you th how you think that's going to be received, and also how it'll affect the events themselves. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a different look to the week because, as you know, there's a lot to do for the athletes and and even for the people in the industry who are there. It's, it's a busy week. Mm. It's a big week. There's a lot of media attention and focus. There's a lot of things to do, a lot of functions to attend. And I remember with the race just on Saturday, it seemed hard to fit it all in, um, in that week. Um, and you finally, you got to Friday and, and all the formalities were done and it was time to race, but it, it had felt like a, a busy week. Can't really imagine what it's going to be like, because it's a compressed week now with obviously the first day of racing on the Thursday. Mm. I think it's going to be busy. I think, it, you know, athletes in particular are just going to have to i mean for, for those of us just floating around it's just going to be sensory overload and i kind of I, I love that i love being in amongst it feeling the atmosphere i think if you're racing you, you're going to have to prepare a little mentally for the fact that it's going to be busier than normal and it's a shortened week it's going to come around quickly i think mm. and, and race week goes quickly anyway i think it's going to be on um hyper speed this year so yeah i, I think 
if I was racing, particularly that Thursday race, I would be in the mindset of race week starting, obviously, earlier. For me, it always used to click into gear about the Saturday or Sunday before. Mm-hmm. It's definitely earlier this year. So definitely some things to be um, wary of uh, if you are towing the line and, and how it's going to be received. I mean, that's, who knows? I mean, it's it's such a, I just hope there's so much good spirit around the event um, mm. from the people coming to the island and, and the people who live there feel that we're, we, we're so thankful to be allowed to come into their home mm. and we're, we're respectful of, of them and, and their land. And, um, and I hope it's really received well. I think it's, there's a big responsibility on all of us who are coming to the island this year to be you know, really sensitive to the fact that people actually live there mm-hmm. um, and, and they're going about their, their day to day. And, and also, I mean, how's it going to work from the, the standpoint of the, the race ops team, the logistics, the volunteers two days. I mean, imagine pulling a 20 hour day and then having to pull another one two days later. It's going to be wild, man. I'm about, you know what, let's just embrace it and get in there. And I think if we go in with, you know, a full heart and an open mind and, and just be grateful that we're back, I think it can work out well. Yeah. The, the, the Ironman has really been emphasizing the, the theme of live Aloha, which has been, yeah a campaign uh, among all the islands for a while now to sort of get tourists in the mindset like you know this this is a sacred place this is a a beautiful place and in a sense we're all guests here and and you know not everything from nature to the culture it has to be respected and hopefully the athletes realize that Kona is not an amusement park it, it wasn't it's not a place where something was put together for you to just go have fun and have your own experience it like you said it's a place where people live where their grandparents live where children are born where cult- the culture is maintained where the spirit of the island has to be honored as we all yeah. know and if the athletes are become aware of that i think it's a real opportunity to actually enhance the ex- experience that they have because it'll be more than just a race it'll yeah. be you know th- this complete um sort of acknowledgement and embodiment of like you said we're we're coming into this special home called the big island we Mm. we are guests and it's almost like you know if you go into somebody's home uh you know they invite you over for dinner whatever it is you know you bring a gift and you 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 go by their rules right you You don't walk behind them and go oh wait i think i i think we should put the couch over here and let's paint this wall green because i like green you know whatever it is and but to just live aloha meaning connect with the people, connect with the island, connect, you know, your intentions and, and your purpose of being there to something more than just that race, which is in itself an amazing experience. But um, mm. as far as a two-day format, I I would, if I was, if I had the choice, I would want to be racing on Thursday because yeah, that way you get your thing done and then you can just have fun and watch a whole day of Ironman racing on Saturday. The guys are going to have to kind of insulate themselves on yeah. Thursday, because if you get caught up in that race that day, you're going to be completely exhausted by the time, yeah. you know, Friday comes around and, and then your race to re- get back up for, I don't know. Yeah, I prefer to be on the Thursday as well. <laughs> sitting out, you know, sitting out on the Saturday watching, watching the race, after, you know, on the Friday, having a few drinks with friends to celebrate all the people who've helped you get there. Yeah. And then you sort of, you, you switch more into holiday mode. Yeah. But I mean, that's another challenge for the athletes to face. And I think the really, the very experienced athletes, I think they'll be able to deal with that. So mm. great. Well, let's dive in. Let's talk about the women's race. I, I know who I think is on top of her game, but I'd love to hear what you have to say. You yeah, what's well, Danny. That's Danny Reef. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's interesting. I didn't pick her to win in Utah. I, I picked her for the podium, but. I'd heard a little rumor that she was sick. Um, and then I saw her race in Oceanside and I thought, oh, maybe, maybe that rumor is true. Um, mm. You know, usually when you see someone of her level do a tune up race, they don't get 10th or 12th, even if they have an off day or they're in heavy training, it's a third. Mm. Or, or, so I, I hadn't picked her to win in Utah, but of course she proved me wrong. Um, she had an amazing race there and didn't skip a beat on the race course all day and, and hasn't since has been flawless um, and deserves, I think, 
favoritism um, for next week. Um, yeah, I just think what we saw at the Collins Cup, what what she that that performance she laid down at Ironman Switzerland, just really in second gear. Mm. Um, she is on top of her game, and and I'm tipping her to win. Um, I've got Laura Phillip as as second. I think I I had actually tipped Laura to win in Utah. Um, you know, well, initially I tipped Lucy, but then she, she got injured and pulled out. Yeah. And I thought, I thought Laura just, her form had been outstanding for 18 months. She was consistently running under 250 for marathons and, and granted they were in cooler climates, but that's still an amazing run as you know. And, mm-hmm. um, she hadn't lost an Ironman race for 12 months. Um, so I, I tipped her going into, into Utah, but then unfortunately she came down with COVID, so missed out. But I think her return to racing has been good. I mean, that race in Hamburg was just incredible. Hmm. I think it was 8.19 or 8.18, missing the Ironman record by eight seconds on a course that I didn't think was super quick. I mean, I watched the marathon that day. It was a four-lap run, twists and turns through the city centre on the, the, the second, third, and fourth lap. She was weaving her way through athletes and, um, yeah, so I, I think her form has has just been, again, flawless to use, an, to use the same word that I used for, for Danny. I mean, she has not really had any hiccups for six months in her racing. So I've, I'm going to put her down for a podium finish, second place, I think. And third place, it was tough. I, I've gone back and forth. I'm just, I'm going to go with, with Lucy. I'm going to go with Lucy. I think, you know, everything I was hearing was that she wasn't racing this year. Um, It was quite a serious injury, a stress reaction uh, in a big bone. Her rehab seemed to take a long time. And, you know, I'm just thinking, oh, well, she'll just put the cue in the rack this year and, and consolidate rehab and then come back next year. But we saw a race at the IT World Long Course Champs and just um, put down an unbelievable performance. Uh, and I, when I saw her on that start list, I thought, well, she's not here just to make up the numbers. When, when you're at that level, you when you go into a race like that, you go there to win. So, And she won well. So I don't think she'll have the back end. I just, I, I just can't imagine that she would have the back end to her race and particularly her marathon that she would normally have. I, I just don't think... I don't think that's possible um, given the lack of run training, but with her swim and bike and the lead that she, I mean, she may have five minutes on the next um, women out of the water. So she's a strong biker. I think she'll, she'll add to that lead and she'll be in the front. She'll be at the front of the Ironman world championships. And we've seen people who have um, come in with preparations that are not perfect, um, do things in that marathon that, you know, weren't really thought possible beforehand or, or probable given the lead up. So I'm going to go Lucy. I think she's going to surprise a few people. I think she'll get on the podium. That means I've left Annie Haug off the podium. Um, <laughs> the, re- the, the reigning Ironman Hawaii world champ. Which which in any normal year you would never do. Hmm. Any normal year if the, if the reigning Ironman world champion was, I mean, I, I once heard you say that until further notice, that athlete, the, the reigning champs, always in the in you know, at the front of the race, always in the reckoning to to do well, mm-hmm. always one of the favourites to to defend, given a good lead up and a good preparation. So yeah, but it's it's not a normal year. It's been three years, um, and I just yeah, I feel that that race will come apart, particularly if there's a little bit of wind. We know what D- Danny can do on the bike. I think Lucy will already be up the road. Um, I think Anne will have an amazing run. There's no question she'll 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 bike and run. She'll swim, bike and run amazing, um, like she always does. But she'll be chasing someone like Laura, who's a great runner. I think Laura will be ahead of her in that race. And I mean, Laura's run. Laura's run is like it's like watching an artist. I think she, her run form, her technique is just beautiful. And so that's the caliber of runner that I mean, it'll be like Anne chasing Anne almost. Mm. So. Yeah, so I've I've got, um, I've just got her off the podium, which I may live to regret. But yeah, no, you, we've got to, we've got to stick our neck out. So that's they're my picks. Yeah, yeah, I would agree that um, Anna Haug is 
she obviously she's got the talent. She's the returning Hawaii Ironman champ, but it, like you said, three years, and it hasn't seemed like she's had that real spot on mm. race ever since then. And I don't, you know, and I actually spoke to her. I said, do you, do you think age is a, an issue? And she goes, I feel young, you know, I, mm. I age is not a problem for me. So it'll, it, if she can bump it up, yeah, for sure. She has a chance of being top three or even winning again and, and defending, but I haven't seen that come together yet in her training. Then you talk about Danny, obviously, you know, when she crossed the line in St. George, it was like, I, you know, she was on fire and she's been on fire. And yeah, you know how that is when there's that momentum that you're, oh, you're building and yeah. it just feeds you like you recover quicker. You can do more workouts because you are more psyched. And there's that is a very you can't everything's better. Momentum. Everything's better. Your food tastes better. Everything's better when you've got that momentum. Life yeah. is better. But but I would agree that Laura Phillip is the one that she, you know, her race in Hamburg, I, I, I commented actually in one of my uh, Mondays with Mark Allen, that that was the race of the weekend because of mm. just that amazing time or amazing. Oh. It, mm. she, she has the potential to just keep, get, go that one step up and really give Danny uh, a mm. run for money. I also agree that um, Lucy, it's hard to make up for lost training time. You know, a, yeah. a, a triathlete, an Ironman athlete, their their Ironman in October is built starting January 1st. You know, yeah, and it is. if you have any significant place in there where you don't have much training or you have no training or you're going through rehab, you know, she's on a fast curve up with her fitness, obviously having a couple of great races, you know, PTO Dallas, she lost her nutrition on the bike. So I don't count that as a real great race for her just because she didn't have calories. But um, I think it will be very hard for her to hit that point that we know that she could have been at, which is so unfortunate. And mm. speaking about unfortunate, Kat Matthews. Oh, I mean, yeah, no. She was, she definitely would have been in the midst in this race as she was in Utah. Um, I actually think I picked cat to win Utah after Lucy and, and Laura pulled out. Yeah. I mean, she's just an athlete who's really going from strength to strength every time she races. Mm. Um, mm. I don't want to say she burst onto the scene, but she, she came onto the scene two or three years ago and it literally feels like every time she races, she really takes a step up and puts another line in the sand. And, and mm. I think it was, she finished fourth at the 70.3 worlds last year in Utah and, yeah, just keep stepping it up. So it is unfortunate. And, um, yeah, we wish her a speedy recovery. That's not the news any of us want to hear or read in the lead in. Mm. And hopefully mm. we don't hear of that happening to any other athlete, pro or age group. Um, of course, it's a risk that we all face being out there on the roads. But, yeah, just terrible news. Mm. Yeah, I, I saw that come in and I'm like, oh, you have got to be kidding. Mm. And I... I reached out and I said, that's not the way you want to be pulled out of a race, you know, getting hit by a, a truck. And anyway, mm. speedy recovery. Kat yes. Yeah. She'll be back. She will definitely be back. Yeah, 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 absolutely. All right. Two days later, the men tow the line. How's yeah. that? Well, I'm, I've thought about it a lot and I just keep coming to the same answer. Christian one, Gustav two. I'm going mm -hmm. for, and, and I'd actually reversed their order for Utah. I thought Gustav would win in Utah and Christian might get second. And I based that on what I'd seen with uh, their lead up Ironman races. Christian had done well in Cozumel, which was a hot and humid, predominantly mm -hmm. flat course. Um, Gustav had done well in Florida, which is also a flat course, but we've just seen him decimate fields in Nice on hilly courses. Um, he climbs so well, descends mm. well, technically amazing, runs the hills well. Mm. Uh, obviously, again, unfortunately, he got sick in race week, so he didn't even make the start line uh, in Utah, but he will, I think, this time. So I just I just think, Christian, I think on this course, it favours a, a real strong, not to say uh, Gustav's not strong, he's incredibly strong. I just think Christian's the he's the strong man at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I think he'll, they'll, they'll swim very close together. I, I think there'll be an elite little front group in that swim. Uh, it's a real shame that 
Alistair's not racing. He just pulled out because I think he would have added some firepower to that front group. Um, and so would have Yarn if Yarn was there, mm-hmm. of course. So, mm-hmm. um, But I still think we're going to get a little group like we did in Utah. Um, I think you can add a couple of extras into that group like Josh Yarnberger, Tim O'Donnell. Mm-hmm. Um, so boys we know will swim at the front and we'll, we'll push push the pace on the bike. Braden Curry will be in that group. Daniel Backergaard will be in that group. Sam Laidlow will be in that group. I think Kyle Smith will be in that group. All what I would call A or A plus swimmers and swim bikers, actually. Mm. Um, and there's a few in there who actually are A plus runners as well. So uh, there'll be there'll be an elite little front group, I think, um, as we usually see in the race, in the men's race. I think at some point though, Christian and Gustav will will get to the front of the race, um, or or at least hold hold like like they like Christian did in Utah. Um, so he's within striking distance of the bike, uh, and then I think with with their run pedigree, I think they'll run under two forty. I think that I think they're going to go under two forty. Um, yeah, so. That's going to be for the other boys then to see. They, they need someone else needs to go under two forty, um, and that's to be seen. And we're seeing more and more people do it now for whatever reason. I, I think the shoes obviously play a huge mm-hmm. part in that. There's no question. I mean, we see mm-hmm. it in 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 running, um, all the marathons for half marathon and, and marathon coming down and ten k on the road. So the shoes play a big part. But yeah, I just think I think notwithstanding the shoes, I think Christian and Gustav were, were sub two forty runners. Um, anyway, so um, mm. that's the way I see the race playing out. I, I think, I think at some point, Christian, um, and it'll be interesting because we haven't really seen them shoulder to shoulder as such. Right, we haven't. In, this, in the same way we saw you and Dave all those years ago. You know, there, there's been a lot of talk and a lot of opportunity, but um, I think Christian got a mechanical at seventy point three worlds last year. Mm-hmm. Um, Gustav didn't make the start line of Ironman World Championships mm-hmm. this year. Then we saw the PTO in Edmonton. Inexplicably, Christian got cramps and um, Gustav ran away with it. So we haven't really seen that shoulder-to-shoulder battle that maybe we will see this week, uh, this yeah, the, the end of this next week coming. So I'm looking forward to that. That would be interesting um, that they're not separated by a minute or two, but they're actually together because, no, I-, I mean, yeah, I would love to see those two duking it out side by side with each mm. other late in the marathon. Um, I, I I'll, I'll I'll give Gustav just that little head head advance, you know, the, the little half a bonus point. Um, and the reason is that he hasn't had a lot of racing. You know, he mm. hasn't had the opportunity yep. to, like, you know, Christian in St. George was unbelievable. That's a demand on your body and. In my opinion, it seems like a little bit of that caught up with him when he had those cramps, you know, months yeah, later in, in Edmonton. Exactly so what that, I was, too. that was like the little bit of chink in his armor that I was thinking, hmm, I wonder if he's just cooked things a little bit, you know. I mean, obviously, you know, that he'll go back, regroup with his coach, figure out, am I overtrained or not? What do I need to do for Kona so that I'm ready? And if he's on, I mean, the dude is like an orca whale. He's like a, a you know, he'll... <laughs> He will he will get you and he will do whatever it takes, even if he is pulled away in the stretch or the second after he crosses that line. Obviously, he knows how to knows how to put it on when the pressure's on. But I'll, I'm I'm just gonna give Gustav that sure. that slight advanced head and see. Let's see, we'll make it interesting that way. Yeah, well, that's they're all valid points. I mean, I thought exactly the same thing when you're watching somebody do a middle distance race and they cramp up. Um I read somewhere afterwards he'd fiddled with his bike seat position, so so maybe that had something to do with it. But mm-hmm. yeah, usually there's something uh, deeper at work when that kind of thing happens. Yeah. And I just would like to think that knowing how scientific they are, that after that they went back and did all their blood testing and worked out and mm-hmm. maybe re-ramped the training a different way. But yeah, Gustav's not without a shout for sure. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. You've got um, Colin Chartier who won PTO Dallas. I met him at Collins Cup last year. Amazing guy. Definitely, he had the confidence even you know a year and a half ago that he can he he'll be able to race with the big boys if he just stays on it. He and Lionel doing a bunch of training together. Uh, same coach. He wins. Lionel gets twenty first. Mm-hmm. How do you explain that? 
Well, as you know, there's a lot of ways to explain that. I mean, it's not only sports, not only physical, it's emotional. It's, mm. it's how we process the information and respond to those sensations and feelings that we have not only on race day, but in the lead up to the race. And then how those feelings and thoughts lead to decisions that we make not only on race day, but in the lead up to the race. Um, you know, we've all seen, and I think we've experienced it ourselves that sometimes your training is just faultless for, for months. And, but if you, if the head's not in the game for whatever reason, mm. um, you don't really, you don't really show that full potential that you've, that you've worked and that you've built in that fitness. You don't really express that fitness on race day. And other times things happen in training. Um, sometimes life gets in the way. Maybe you haven't been as consistent as you would like and, but you turn up on race day and, and, and race week, just in a good place, happy to be there surrounded by good people mm. grateful to be there and and everything's very clear in your mind and you just can go to the depths on race day and and put out a performance that maybe the training didn't indicate um so there's, there's so many things i mean i i for me the sport is always more fun when lionel's doing well i, mm -hmm. I like I, I really agree. like i i just i like him i mean i'm sad he got his tooth fixed um <laughs> I, uh, I love the story about the, the snow plow and um <laughs> but you know i mean yeah he just needs to turn it around he needs to he needs to find it within himself mentally that whatever happened in dallas happened mm. whatever happened i mean if he's mm. been doing all the same training as colin and colin's been able to put out a performance like that well then in theory, so should Lionel be able to. I mean, Agreed. yeah, but it can be hard. Um, you know, the doubts tend to bubble to the surface the closer um, the day of reckoning comes around. The closer mm. it gets, the more that the, the doubts can bubble up. But he's been around ten years now, Lionel. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping he can he can put that aside, and and I think he will. I, I think, you know, come race day. I mean, he's had a second place at the Ironman World Championships before, so he does know how to how to perform. And what I've noticed the last five or six years, well, not the last three because we haven't been there, but you know, going to Kona, that the conditions are so variable. Mm. Um, I don't think there's been a lot of wind in in the recent races. Um, you always get the heat and humidity to some degree. Um, you know, Lionel's performed in those conditions, so I'm not sure. Yeah. I hope he can turn it around. I mean, I, I, my, my 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 pick for the third podium spot, I, I think it's Braden Curry again. I think Braden, mm. I mean, he's had a he's had a fourth on the Big Island before. He got a third in Utah. I think he's got some momentum, like you talked about with Danny. Mm -hmm. He went to his favorite training ground in Noosa to prepare, had his family with him, and then he's done the last little bit. I think in Maui, which is where he normally goes. Mm. I think he's just been, you know, they say a week can be a long time in sport. It can be, but, you know, from Utah to Kona is also not, not so long either that you forget those feelings and, and you, that you don't carry that momentum. I think mm. you, it's, it's possible that if you, if you, if things are heading in the right direction and you have an unbelievable race in, in Utah in May, you can carry that all the way through to October. Yeah. Um, we talked, we talked about Danny. We think she will do that. And then I think Braden will be riding that wave as well. He knows how to race. He's an unbelievable swimmer. He will be at the front of the race. Mm -hmm. Very strong on the bike. He will work. He will, I mean, in Utah, I, I just, every little bit of footage I saw, he was on the front. So he's, he's going to work and he'll have a couple of willing allies as well and can run well, can run really well, has run. I mean, I, I saw him run a 239 in Cairns a few years ago. Mm. Um, which is a flat course, but it, that's a it's a run course that beats your legs up. It's all concrete, mm. and there there tends usually to be a bit of drop off at the back end of that right that run. So, for most athletes, just because of the impact on the concrete. But yeah, so I mean, but Colin, there's a there's a lot of names we could mention. I mean, Colin. I mean, yeah. wouldn't that be it? Wouldn't that be a story? Um, mm. Daniel Backergaard. I mean, he had a great race in Utah, and he's just been. Race good in Elsinore at the seventy point three um, race. There has just been 
I mean, probably had a little bit of a blip in Dallas, but again, mm. when you're in heavy training or racing a race like that, that can go either way in the lead up, um, especially if you've got to travel 14 hours to get there. And mm-hmm. um, and, and you've got Magnus Ditlev who won Rock. Oh, wow. And an I mean, incredibly how, amazing race. How am I not putting him on my podium? I know. I mean, he'll be up there and he will impact this race. Yeah. Um, he's a guy who's just, he's exciting to watch. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, we, there's only three spots on the podium, so we can't mm. put them all on there. And I'd, I like to, I'd like to sit on the fence. I mean, Magnus for me has to be top five somewhere. Yeah. And if he, if he races like he did in Roth, well, the podium's there for the taking, isn't it? Yeah. So um, I, I have to say a lot of, you know, I've asked a lot of people who they think and, you know, the, the usual names come up, you know, Gustav and, and Christian and, but so many names so many people saying, and Braden Curry, just like you said. Mm-hmm. So I, I think he's got a pretty good chance of really making that breakthrough in Kona. Yeah. And I, I think he's one of those guys who would have done that had we not lived through a pandemic. I mean, his mm-hmm. last race, I think, I think 2009 or was it might've been 2018, 2018, he finished fourth there and had just been trending up each time. And, and, you know, like I do, when you, when you see that in an athlete, you just see them start just the confidence and, and figuring out what training works and what doesn't, when to get to the Island, you know, that, that self-awareness of the things that work for them. Mm. Um, and when you see someone just trending up each year like that, you think, oh, okay, I mean, I think, well, I know where this is going to end up. So um, he was a guy who was doing that. And I think he'll continue on. I think mm. he, he will. I think we'll see it again next week. Mm. I have I have one final question. And I think you're, you're probably the person who can probably answer this the best. You, you mentioned Alistair Brownlee is out. He would have been a factor in the race. But, I, you know, the real factor is Jan Frodeno, who is yeah, not going to be yeah. there. Yeah. When you have a Jan Frodeno in the race, there's the guy that everybody's focusing on and then everybody who's trying to outdo him. You take that out of the race, it completely changes the dynamic of how the day is going to unfold. It does. How do yeah. you see it without without that sort of anchor athlete that everybody's chasing? I think it will. It might seem obvious to say this, but it makes it easier for everyone else because then they just focus on their own race maybe more. Mm. Um, and I, I think. I think he would have been a factor in Utah because he would have been in that front group on the bike. And which means to me that they would have been getting off with a four to five minute lead or more, maybe even a little more with him in the group over Christian. Now Christian ran an amazing run. I don't think Jan's ever run under a 240. So mm. he would have had to he would have had to have done that. And and for me, that's not beyond the, the realms of possibility with these new shoes and and everything that's going on. Um, you know, I think Jan's last run was a 242 encounter. I think he had, he had the shoes then or the first uh, evolution of the shoes, but taking him out of the race is a big out uh, in my opinion, because he's just, he knows how to win um, consistently. Absolutely. He gets himself in shape consistently. Mentally, he's always in a good place to, to do what he needs to do. He has so many tools. I mean, we've seen him win races from the front, we've seen him win races from a group. Um, I mean, I, I remember one of his 70.3 championship wins. Um, it was his technical skill on the bike, descending back into Zelamji that got him back like he, I think there was a couple of Uber bikers off the front and I consider Jan an Uber biker anyway, but that little descent coming back in the town got him back to the front of the race. So he hit the run course first, which puts everyone on the back foot. You can't mm. overstate how how important that is when the race favourite gets off the bike first and starts running, you know, and is fastest on course. It's, Mm. um, he just tactically, technically everything. I mean, it it affects the race a lot. Having him in that front swim group would have, would have driven it. Um, so it would have been one more just V12 engine in that front group as well. So, (laughs) um, it changes the race enormously and it's a real shame for him and for, for yeah. those of us who, who love to watch just, you know, just watching the best people, um, you know, having Christian and Gustav there, I mean, I know a lot of people think they're the, the big favorites and, and I, I probably would have tipped them 
Yeah, I think I probably would have tipped those two had Yarn still been in the race, but he's not without a big chance uh, mm -hmm. because they. I don't think they would have made they they will make that front swim group, and and he he hundred percent will be in that yeah. front swim group, and so then maybe then the pendulum swings back to advantage to him again. So you know we can analyze these things on paper and times and what we see them do on the bike and the run, but we we both know the race plays out differently sometimes, and the, sometimes an athlete like Yarn can take the race away from others we've seen him do it um so yeah it's a it's a big mm. shame and it, it absolutely impacts the way this race will be raced yeah it really is a shame that he's not there just because it has been so long since we have seen kona be contested and it's the first time that a huge crop of of new athletes is going yeah. to be competing and it would be great even if even if he didn't win to sort of have that passing of the, of the crown or to have him put his stamp on that race one more time and so that people can go that's the standard yeah come on up boys you know what i'm saying yeah yeah and i i, I do agree it could either and it, it could either make it so that the other athletes do their own race or they might think it's wide open and they end up going too hard yeah and i can yeah. see it going both ways so. <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely for sure I mean, I think, again, it comes down to that, the mindset as well. And I think mm -hmm. the experience, I think the experienced athletes, well, I mean, in the end, the only things you can control out there on race day are, are your own pacing, your own nutrition, and, and the way you respond to different decisions and or different situations, but also the way you put your own stamp on the race as well. So, um, and, and <clears throat> you're right though, having a shadow, Yarn, yarn casts a very big shadow over everybody. Mm. So, um, yeah, not having him there is a huge loss, huge loss for the race and for us watching the race. Mm. Well, there you have it, everybody, from the triathlon professor emeritus, Craig <laughs> Alexander himself. An analysis like you will not hear anywhere oh. else. I am so thankful that you had the time to, to chat today. And uh, we'll see you in Kona, I think, right? Yeah, I'll be there. Looking forward to to catching up, and um, yeah, it's it's going to be like a big school reunion. We haven't we haven't been there for a while, and it's just a great place. A lot of great friends there, and it'll be good to get back. Mm, absolutely, road to Kona, everybody, and remember, if you're there, please live Aloha. We'll see you in Kona. <laughs>